What's up everybody, glad you're back. Today I wanted to run through the three shelters that I use year round for lightweight backpacking. I recently put together a short on this topic and I got a really good response, so I wanted to put together a long form for all of you that goes into a little bit more detail on technical specs as well as pros and cons of each shelter type. Some of these points are gonna be specific to individual shelter models that I have, while others are gonna be more geared towards the shelter type, so tarps or pyramids generically. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag. First up is my Z-Pax 8.5 by 10 tarp, and I absolutely love this thing. It's my primary shelter for solo backpacking, and while I do have a lot of tarps, this one is definitely my go-to. It weighs 7.1 ounces, and it's made out of 0.55 ounce per square yard DCF. Technically, it's what you would consider a two-person tarp, but since I live in the Pacific Northwest where it rains pretty much all the time, obviously not right now because it's July, but most of the year, it's really nice to have a larger shelter that I can spread out in, cook under, change under, rather than trying to squeeze myself under a tiny tarp and not get wet. This tarp in particular has straight edges rather than curved, and it has a total of 16 tie-out points. The pros here are that with that many tie-out points, it's a very versatile shelter, and it can be set up in a variety of different configurations depending on the weather and conditions that I'm experiencing. Also, and the main reason why I really use it most of the time, is it manages condensation extremely well, and that's obviously because it's open on most sides. The nice thing about that is you get a lot of good airflow, so my sleeping bag usually doesn't get very wet from condensation overnight, and I don't really have to worry about condensation building up on the tarp either, that's gonna sprinkle down on me when it gets windy. Also, this thing is just crazy light and it takes up almost no space in my pack at all. And finally, the big reason why I choose to use a tarp is really just that it brings me close to nature and there's a certain fun factor about it. I don't wanna turn this video into a benefits of tarp camping video, but it's nice to wake up and see the trees rather than the inside of a tent. As far as cons here, there definitely are a few. The biggest is probably that the 0.55 DCF is a little bit fragile and it does require some care. Now, that's not a Z-Pax problem or a problem with the material itself. It's just that if you're going to get a tarp this light, there are going to be some trade-offs and durability is one of them. You may have seen in my last video, I actually put a very small pinhole in this tarp during setup because it blew away on me one time. I'll also say that this kind of shelter definitely requires the most care and thought when it comes to site selection. You can't just set it down anywhere like you would a tent. You really do need to make sure that you're protecting yourself from any pooling water and that you've got good wind breaks to make sure that you have a comfortable and safe night's sleep. Also, a shelter like this quickly loses its appeal in terms of weight savings if you need to protect yourself from mosquitoes so add a bug net or a bug bivy or something along those lines or if you're worried about pooling water so you want to take a waterproof bivy or a bathtub floor or if you're going to be using trekking poles to set it up because if you compare it to let's say a plex solo tent from z-packs which is 15 ounces you get very close to that weight using a tarp once you start adding in those extra pieces of gear and this is more specific to this tarp in particular but i would love it if it had tie outs along the ridge line so that i could make a little bit more room for my feet when I have my foot end stake down close to the ground. You can do it with the side panel tie outs, it's just not quite as easy. Up next is my Mountain Laurel Designs Duo Mid, and this is my solo shelter for when I'm expecting bad weather or if I'm going to be camping above tree line. It weighs 15.5 ounces and it's made out of 0.75 DCF, so the material is a little bit more robust than the Z-Pax tarp that we went through earlier. As the name implies, it's a pyramid design and it has a total of 16 tie out points. So the pros of this shelter are that this thing is absolutely bomb proof. Because of the low angled walls and the zippered door, it holds up exceptionally well in high wind. Also, setup is incredibly quick and simple with pyramids. All you do is stake down your four corners and insert your trekking pole. You can stake out more points if you want to, but that's really all that's required to get it standing and get you into some place dry. Another nice thing is that the one pole design is lighter and stronger than two pole alternatives. And this is especially good for people like me that don't typically carry trekking poles other than to pitch their shelters. And finally, another big perk is that the duo mid and other pyramids pyramids are generally modular, so you can add an internet with a bathtub floor depending on conditions, or you can just go out with the fly to save weight. Because of the versatility here, this would be great for someone that only wants to buy one shelter to use throughout the year. And just as a heads up, the Duo Mid is available in either Sil, Poly, or DCF, so you can definitely save yourself a bit of money if you go with the Sil Poly version. So the number one problem that I've had with the Duo Mid is definitely that mine arrived with a leaky peak vent. If you want a little bit more info on that, I just released a video on it, and I'll include a link in the description so that you can check it. It out. Also, the Duo Mid is affected by the same problems that really all mids have. The first is that you lose a lot of space around the perimeter due to the low angled walls, and it can be really hard to keep your sleeping bag in your face from touching the tent and getting wet. Also, having a pole right through the center definitely reduces the amount of usable space in the shelter. You can definitely angle it, but you do lose some structural stability when you do that. Also, you can bring two trekking poles and put them out to either side, but at that point, you're adding quite a bit of weight to your kit if you don't already carry.
secondary trekking poles, so I don't really see the point, for me personally anyway. Also, mids in general don't react well to being pitched in sort of weird spots, so it really likes to be level and square, so if you have to try and fit it in somewhere, you're gonna end up with kind of a wonky pitch that doesn't look great and isn't awesome in the wind. And finally, the duo mid doesn't pitch all the way to the ground. I understand why the vestibule is raised up a bit, it's so that you can get more airflow in there, but I would love to have something for winter that I could put all the way down to the ground and really batten down the hatches so that I don't get spin drift in there when I'm trying to sleep. In all honesty, I've been considering replacing the duo mid with a Durston X mid with a full inner. That way I'd have something a little bit more robust for the snow. It is a little bit heavier, but again, this isn't my everyday shelter. I'd love to hear from anybody in the comments who has an X-Mid so that I can hear how you like it. And then my third shelter in the current lineup is the Z-Pax Triplex. This is the shelter that Lynn and I share when we go out backpacking. It weighs 21.6 ounces and it's made out of 0.55 DCF, just like my Z-Pax flat tarp. It's a two pole design and it's meant to fit three people cozy, but it works great for two people in rainy weather. The pros for the triplex are that it's an absolute palace for two people for under 22 ounces. It's also shockingly wind resistant. We slept under it in a windstorm one night. There were trees coming down everywhere. I was actually concerned that a branch was gonna spear us through the tent, but luckily nothing happened. And the tent stayed standing. We didn't have any problems whatsoever. So it definitely has my confidence in gross weather. Also, it's just nice to have a real tent with bug netting and a floor. We get to camp, I set it up quick, we're good to go. There's no messing around with additional internets or bivvies or anything like that. The cons here are that it is definitely a bit bulky and it can be challenging to pack. If I fold it just right, I can fit it horizontally in the Exodus. I can fit it pretty easily vertically and it definitely won't fit in the burn with other gear. Also, I do find that the doors can be a little challenging to work with from the inside. You definitely have to kind of contort yourself to open or close the doors. Although z -Packs did address this issue by releasing a new version of this tent with zippers for two ounces more. Another small challenge with this tent is that it has a very large footprint, which definitely limits site selection. But if we want something large for the two of us, that just sort of comes with the territory. And final, just little nitpick, the way the doors open, the nano CM mesh tends to fall on the ground and nano CM in particular is kind of like Velcro. It just loves to pick up dirt and debris. And I wish that they would have done it in a way that the door opens sideways so that that doesn't happen. I'm sure they did it this way for a reason, but it's just always something that kind of bothered me just a tiny bit. So there you have it, an overview of all of the shelters in my current rotation. Let me know down in the comments what your current favorite shelter or shelters are. I'd love to hear what everybody's using these days. And if lightweight backpacking is your jam, I recently made a video on the top six mistakes that I made as a new lightweight backpacker. So make sure to check that out when you get a chance. And as always, thanks a million for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.